Right, another day here in Rotorua and we're going to check out another experience today. Um, we are going to go and check out Paradise Valley. So um, I think it has sort of native birds and trout and that sort of thing. Um, also has like the biggest lion pride in New Zealand, I believe. So a whole pride of lions. I don't think Harvey's <laughs> seen lions before, have you? Yeah, he has. Oh, he might have done. At yeah, Fort Worth Zoo. Ah, oh, Fort Worth Zoo in Texas. Of course you have. He might not remember that far back. So we're going to get, go check that out. Um, it's another one of those places that has a locals discount at the moment because of COVID. So, win-win. How cool is this, this enclosure? You just wander around in here with all these kia hopping around you. Um, kia are a bird from the South Island. You'll probably see more of them when we go down to the South Island on our adventures, but um, they're known to be really destructive. So there's a road you can drive over to the West Coast and um, tourists always park on the top of this kind of lookout area. And the kia come down and pull windscreen wipers off and door handles and just like wreck um, like, um, aerials as well, pull aerials off motorhomes and rental cars and stuff so they're really destructive but um, really beautiful bird, I've not been this close to them before, it's quite cool. this place keeps getting better there's a um, little treetop walkway um, it was up about 50 steps with a pushchair and uh, no ramps unfortunately but pretty neat I think um, a lot of the families that are in the circuit with us are um, not coming up here because of pushchairs so it's actually really nice and quiet Well, this place kind of surprised us in the end, eh? Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, it was really neat. The lion enclosure, meh. Not always great seeing lions in captivity, right? Even if they were born here. And it looked a little small, maybe. For the amount of lions that were there, yeah. Yeah, and maybe I would have thought there'd be trees and stuff. But the rest of the place was really amazing. It's kind of like a mixture of um, like a petting zoo. <laughs> and, a, uh, and then like native birds and native animals and... Um, 
yeah really cool i think covid eh, definitely kept the numbers down yeah i wouldn't really want to be here if there were a couple of tour buses going through but yeah. no it's been really cool today it's nice the path around it is really long and you can tell it's made for numbers right yeah because it's all one way so um you know you kind of just follow the same sort of people around but yeah, I don't know what it would be like with tour buses here. There's no buses, loads of people here today, but, you know, just families and stuff. But, yeah, really neat experience. Glad yeah. glad we came here. Yeah. All right, Paradise Valley, done and dusted. Had a really great time there, actually. Really enjoyed it. Um, we're going to chill out for the rest of the afternoon now. Head back over to Topol later on tonight. That's one thing I do love about these NZMCA parks. Sorry, talking about them again. Um, you obviously don't have to check out, like, a campground, right? So, campground, you'd have to check out at maybe 2 o'clock. Um, you can leave later on in the day and it ends at MCA Park, which is really nice. So we'll head back shortly. Um, a couple of things I want to talk to you guys about and get your opinions, advice, tips maybe. Um, I've kind of been thinking and we've been discussing a lot more about the things in the caravan that we find a bit sort of frustrating. Um, you know, we've been a bit nitpicky with all our sort of processes and what we do and um, processes. <laughs> And uh, just trying to find ways to like tweak things that annoy us a bit to make um, life on the road this coming summer, you know, that little bit easier. Uh, a couple of things like we've got a really tiny rubbish bin in here. Um, so we've been looking around online for one of those ones that attaches to the inside of the door. Try and double the size of the rubbish bin. So that's one thing. Um, the laundry hamper as well that we've got. Um, we've got a fold out laundry hamper. We store it in the shower during the day with our laundry in it. But we can't travel with it in the shower because it's actually marked the shower tray a few times. Left some small scratches in it. So we move it somewhere when we travel and then when we pull over we put it back in the shower and then when we want to shower we take it out and put it in the, uh, the hallway. I guess you could say the hallway down in front of the kids beds. Uh, but then you can't open their drawers. So um, we're pretty certain we're going to get the washing machine taken out in a few weeks time. Uh, we're getting our diesel heater looked at. So we're gonna get the washing machine taken out at the same time. We just don't use it. Um, we've used it a few times. It uses way too much water, nearly 80 liters of fresh water it'll use on a full load. So it's just not economical for us. That's one of our tanks, right? Um, so we're gonna get that taken out. And then I guess we, we've got the laundry sort of washing machine lid at the moment. We'll try and find some sort of basket that fits down inside there. So I'll actually have a, gained a bit of storage. Um, one thing that is bugging me that I'd like your your tips and tricks on is the fruit bowl and um, it sounds real small and petty but bench space in this caravan is pretty um, limited and we like to stack our sort of dirty dishes when we're cooking or whatever on the right hand side of the sink so away from the stove and the fruit bowl takes up probably a third of that space <laughs> and um, We've tried to move it around, like if we put the fruit bowl at the head of our bed on our little shelf, um, the kids get into it. We put it on the table, but the kids get into it and they're often doing puzzles and, you know, books and book work and all that sort of thing on the table. So we could put it on top of the laundry machine by the toilet, the washing machine, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it's probably not ideal. So I kind of, I'm not sure where to go with the, um, the fruit bowl. I did have an idea the other day and I've run it past Chelsea. She's on board. We might actually take the, the microwave out. Um, these Jayco caravans come with this nice sphere microwave. Um, we have probably used this once, maybe twice in a year to reheat some uh, baby food. Normally we do that on the stove in a pot, but we use the microwave once to do it. But it just takes up a lot of quite valuable real estate in here. I'm thinking if I um, I'm guessing it's as simple as just taking these two screws out and then this this must um, stop it from sliding out. So what I'm thinking is I might take the microwave out in a, a future video down the line somewhere, make some sort of um, lip uh, here. I don't want to put a full cupboard on it because obviously it wouldn't match any other cupboards. I'm I'm not that handy, but I'm thinking some sort of lip or um, I've also seen people use the elastic and they do kind of like up and down sort of elastic bands i'm thinking this might gain us a lot of space we could put our fruit bowl in there maybe not get a bowl but some sort of square container probably make more sense and i was also thinking we could probably keep our breakfast cereals up here um you know those sort of cereal containers you have stack those up there yes it'll be open it'll be visible um but it's about living in this space right so uh i think i might try that in a future video let me know your thoughts obviously i'll keep the va um the vacuum cleaner keep the microwave for resale um but i 
just don't think we'll use it enough. Our whole kind of goal next year is not to stay on, is to stay off grid, um, right? So not pay for powered campsites are too expensive. And this only works on a powered campsite. I don't have a generator. I've got no desire to get one. So the microwave might have to go. Get rid of it? What do you reckon? Well, I mean, store it somewhere, I guess, for resale. <laughs> um, I just think there's a lot of really usable space up there. Um, there's also like a lip above the microwave and it seems quite deep. So I'm not sure if there might be quite a, a good bit of space up there. So might be a bit of a goer. Obviously, whatever I um, end up building to hold whatever's in there will have to be able to hold like, you know, that sort of weight. Also not ideal having weight up that high, I suppose. So maybe I need to switch from the old glass um, <laughs> fruit bowl to plastic container of some sort. Um, the other thing we are gonna look at, and if you have any recommendations, let us know, is a carbon monoxide detector. I was under the impression that the smoke alarm above our bed here was also a carbon monoxide detector. And then I saw a, a post on Instagram from a, a family who's traveling around Australia in the same caravan, and that installed a, a separate carbon monoxide detector. And so I sort of said to him, hey, um, what about the one above the bed? And he said, no, that's just a smoke alarm. So a uh, bit of a worry. We've, we've gone nearly a year, um, you know, just of weekend camping, but nearly a year without a carbon monoxide detector. So I'm definitely going to get one of those. There's obviously some options around wired ones versus um, the ones that have the sealed batteries in them. Um, so some of them are like 10 year long batteries. Some of them you've got to plug into your 12 volt system. I've also got to consider where we put it um, for small humans that like to pull things that are stuck to walls. So I think from memory they have to be down low. So I'll have to put some thought into where we put the, the old carbon monoxide detector. But I'm going to get one of those ASAP because uh, got me a little bit worried now. It's that sort of thing you, you don't want to muck around and uh, muck around with rather in a caravan. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to sort a few things out. I'll show you guys all those things when they arrive. And um, thank you for tuning in as always. Uh, I've got a couple of new videos in the works. Um, I just installed the GPS tracker. So we've got a review coming up of our little um, uh, Orchid is the brand of GPS tracker I installed. Cool little um, chip, less than 150 bucks. So I've got that hidden somewhere in the caravan. Not going to tell you where. And um, also going to work on a putting together. I've just got all the pieces for an external gray tank. Um, you've probably seen me with the roll away gray tank in previous videos, but I bought all the proper fittings and hose connectors and vent pipes and everything to make it um, to the self-containment standard basically. So it'll give us another 40 liters of wastewater um, space to play with when we're on the road. Thank you for watching. If you got any questions at all, fire away below. And um, as always, thanks for coming on the adventure and supporting the channel. Appreciate you. See ya.